We've seen one-to-one -one relationships in our previous tutorial. This tutorial, we're going to see one-to-many. Um, the example that we had was a user object and a vehicle object, and we had a one-to-one -one mapping. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at um, a single user object with multiple vehicle objects. So that establishes the one-to-many relationship. It also establishes a many-to-one relationship depending on where you're looking at it. The user to vehicle is a one-to-many and a vehicle to user is a many-to-one. So we're going to look at both of them in this tutorial. So just like one-to-one, one-to-many is as simple as just having a one-to-many annotation. Now I just have to import this. So all I'm doing is I'm having a one-to-many annotation. I don't even have to give the join column, just like the one-to-one. Join column is optional. So I just declare one to many and then I define a, a collection set here. So I just have set of vehicle. Or let me call this a collection so that I can implement an array list. Collection vehicle. And I will initialize it so that it has a value. It is not null on the first addition. Let's say new array list of vehicle. Now I will change the getters and setters to reflect this change. Okay, so now this is done. Um, let's save this. And of course, I'll have to change this to chart get vehicle dot add off vehicle. So I'm passing this vehicle and I'm adding this vehicle object that I've initialized here to this array list. And now when I'm saving, I'm saving the user as well as the vehicle and it now has to map it according. So let, let me just create a new vehicle object just, uh, just because we have this uh, one to many, we need to have um, one more to know exactly what's happening. So I'll have vehicle two and I'll call this Jeep and uh, let me add this as well. Vehicle 2, user.save of vehicle as well as vehicle 2. So in essence it is same as uh, what we saw you know, when the, with the user object and the address. So I have one user object with multiple uh, addresses the same way I have one user object with multiple vehicles. The only change that I'm making here is that since vehicle is an entity and not an embeddable object, um, I am declaring this as a one to many. That's it. So this is all it takes. So now let's uh, let's run this and see what is the data structure. What is a table structure that it creates? Okay. Now here you go. You have uh, user details. Okay. So this is the user table. Vehicle. It's the vehicle table. Note that neither the user details has information about the vehicle nor the vehicle has information about the user. Instead, what Hibernate has done is it has created this new table called user details underscore vehicle and it has mapped both these user IDs. It has taken the user details user ID and it's taken the vehicles ID and it's called it the vehicle underscore vehicle ID and then it has created this table with these two IDs mapped to it. Now let's have a look at the data here. User details, it's just first user and uh, about vehicle. I have made the same mistake that I did in the earlier tutorials. I have uh, again a copy paste error. Sorry about that. Uh, that's why this this field is not there. So let me just run this again. 
Okay, so vehicle should have these two records. Yeah, there it is. So now user and vehicle are fine, but now let's look at this uh, this table here, user details underscore vehicle. Now this has a mapping of the user ID and the vehicle ID. So ideally what should happen is this table should have one map to two and one map to three. So if we just query this one, Oops, there you go. One is mapped to two and one is mapped to three. So this is, uh, this is a very simple implementation of, you know, uh, one to many. So I have this uh, user details to Java having a one to many implementation and this is what is stored. Now I can configure the the join columns and the join table here. So I have, I have this join, uh, Table annotation again. This is just to this is just to override the default names that has come up. Um, if you look at the default names here, you have uh, user details underscore user ID. That it's actually the table name underscore user ID, and then this again the other table name underscore vehicle ID, and then it has concatenated both these for the table. It's user underscore details underscore vehicle. So say I want to override these names, all I do is I do a join table. Now this join table has a few options in order to configure this. So if I do a control space, so you can see there is something called as join columns and inverse join columns. So the join columns allows you to configure the name of the column from the user details table and the inverse join columns allows you to configure the name of the other, uh, but you know, the, the other ID that's actually getting embedded here. Let me, let me just code this so that it becomes clear. So what I do is I have a at add join column and then name equals I'll call this user ID and then I have the inverse join columns. equals again okay, at join column name equals what's that vehicle score id so so essentially what i'm doing is i'm saying create a join table and then the join column that is the column from this uh, from as an id of this entity will be user id and then the inverse join column is uh, the other guy, the other ID from the related uh, entity has to be vehicle ID. And of course I can change the name here as well. There's a name property. So I can say name equals user vehicle. And uh, so I'm configuring the table name as well. So if I save and run this again, the names should change. Yeah, the name has changed. So it's user underscore vehicle for the join and then user ID underscore, uh, user underscore ID and vehicle underscore ID for the primary keys. So there is one other thing that we can uh, we can do here. Uh, we can do this for the one-to-one -one also, which we saw in the earlier tutorial, but it makes more sense to do this here, which is that you can have a reverse relationship in the sense that just like you have a, just like you have a one-to-many here for the user details, we can have a many-to-one here in the vehicle. So I can have here private, user details, user. Now, what I'm doing is I'm creating a reverse relationship. Every vehicle has an owner, right? So I, no matter what vehicle uh, you take, there has to be a link pointing to the owner. So if you have a user object, it's easy to get the vehicle object. But if you have a vehicle object, you need a way to get who the user is. So I'm going to define this user uh, member variable here. And I'm going to do a 
implement the getters and setters. Okay. Now what I'll do here is I will I will define a add many to one relationship. So I will again this is from Java X dot persistence. So what this is saying is just like you have uh, this relationship here, which is one to many, I can have a reverse relationship so that when I pull up a vehicle object, say I have a handle with the vehicle object, I can use a vehicle dot get user. So this get user will return me the user. So I'm telling Hibernate to have this many to one annotation so that the proxy knows that when I'm doing a get user, needs to go to the database and pull up the record. So that way I can, depending on whether I have a user object or a vehicle object, I can get the other object easily by using the corresponding getters. So now that we have this, there's just one other thing which needs to be done. Uh, we have the link from uh, vehicle to user. So when we are actually creating the data, what we do is just like you're adding a vehicle to the user, so what we do is you do a vehicle dot set user as user. So we are establishing the link the other way as well. So the same way vehicle to dot set user as user. So essentially what we're doing is we're having a bi-directional relationship. So if we do this and we have saved all these three entities, you can get a vehicle from a user by using a vehicle, you know, user.get vehicle and you get a list. And the same way you can get a user by using a vehicle object by using a vehicle dot get user. So that would give you the user for any vehicle. So this is something that uh, we can use for bi-directional relationships, which are very commonly used in real world applications. Um, one other thing that is a, it's a, it's a handy tip, what we do is uh, we can have a convenience method. So in the user details uh, class or in the vehicle class, vehicle class, it doesn't matter. You can have a assign vehicle uh, method. So what that does is that method takes care of doing both. So when whenever you want to associate a user to a vehicle, you will have to do two things. First, user.getVehicle.add a vehicle and then vehicle dot set user of user. So you can use, you can add these two lines of code into a convenience method and then call that method, probably pass uh, both the user and the vehicle object to that method. So that method takes care of doing um, both these assignments, you know, adding user to vehicle and adding vehicle to user. So, um, so that the data remains consistent. And of course the advantage is that you can access one object from the other.